One of my greatest fears since I was a little kid are bugs. I think it's pretty normal to be spooked by the occasional spider, moth, or whatever this is, but when I say they were one of my greatest fears, I mean it. Like I'd go outside in the spring and someone would point out a cute little butterfly, but by the time they could say, oh look, I'd already be two football fields away from the pretty bug. It got to the point that I genuinely thought that I might have entomophobia, but my fear was too inconsistent. Like spiders are literally one of the most common phobias, but they didn't specifically bother me, while bugs like crickets, bees, and even flies would make me extremely stressed out. Over the years, I started to realize my fear mainly included flying bugs for some reason, probably because they have a much bigger jump scare factor because of how quickly and freely they're able to move, but all these bugs were genuinely limiting what I was doing in life, because I'd be trying to avoid a ladybug next to a doorbell or something. It's crazy how much your brain can subconsciously affect things like that, but one way you can genuinely help Help free your mind is with therapy, and one of the best ways to get started is with today's sponsor, BetterHelp. I had a hard time telling people how much bugs affected me because it seemed so irrational, but one way therapy has helped me is by creating a space where I can express all my feelings, even on things that might seem silly from the outside. It can be hard to get yourself to go to therapy for lots of reasons, but I genuinely think that therapy can be a benefit for anyone. So BetterHelp's mission of making therapy more accessible and affordable with its online platform is pretty awesome. You get matched with a professional therapist in just a few days by filling out a few questions about yourself, and it's super easy to get started with the link in the description, betterhelp.com slash oats. You'll be supporting the channel and you'll even get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. And because it can be hard to open up to someone new, if you don't fit with your original therapist, you can easily just switch on over to a new therapist therapist that fits your vibe at no additional cost. So if anything is bugging you right now, consider online therapy with BetterHelp and click the link in the description. Thanks to BetterHelp for supporting the channel. But yeah, anyways, my fear has gotten a bit better recently, but to take a lesson from Batman, I'm not just gonna face my fears, I'm gonna embrace them by making a tier list. This is good, this is bad, and I'm gonna be as objective as possible. This means even if I'm personally scared of one of these guys, I'm gonna put that aside and just look at all its cool traits and try to give it a fair ranking. Starting with one of the true classics, ants. You might remember ants from that one time you saw a big clump of them on the sidewalk, but the way their whole society works is actually really sick. They have perfect teamwork skills, and they even get different body types depending on what their career choice is. The most extreme being the queen, which is mega sized and gets to fly around just for fun, I guess. Every ant's job is centered around helping the queen. And since the ant in power isn't corrupt and actually cares about the colony's well being, this is basically peak performance when it comes to the survival of the little ant society. And while their whole concept of cooperation is a good lesson we should take note of, I'm not totally for the idea of getting rid of all individuality and only doing one thing for your entire life. B tier. Next we got some icons of the growth mindset, caterpillars, butterflies, and moths. These fellas are about as close as you're gonna get to real life Pokemon evolution with three phases of life that are so different, we'll rank them all individually. Caterpillars get on the grind set day one, with the sole purpose of crawling around to eat all their surroundings and be super cute. The amount of destruction these little guys are capable of while looking so silly is awesome, and it gives off some Kirby vibes. There are tons of cool variants with all sorts of styles and abilities, and honestly, I think it wouldn't be fair to put them anywhere other than S tier. And next, we got the Cocoon Stage. These are a good lesson in life that even if on the outside you seem pretty lazy, unremarkable, insignificant, nobody knows what you got cooking up in your internal goop, and you can go on to impress everybody once you're ready. Pretty cool concept, but since we're ranking each stage individually, we won't give it too much or too little credit. After a few days or weeks, the loading screen that is the cocoon finishes up, and out comes either our friend, the butterfly, or our enemy, the moth. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but to me, moths and butterflies are basically the same thing, and science agrees with me. Like lots of people think butterflies are daytime and moths are nocturnal, or butterflies are skinny and moths are hairy, but there's exceptions to basically any rule that anyone has made up. The definition is super sloppy and it's basically all subjective, but in general, butterflies are this vibe, moths are this vibe. Anyway, everyone knows the deal with butterflies. Personally, I feel like they're kind of whatever. I'll give them C tier. 
but some moths look way cooler than any butterfly I've ever seen. The wings are pretty comparable, but when you look at the face and body, moths just look more interesting and fun. We'll go B tier. Beetles are apparently a quarter of all the animals that we know about. Not just bugs, beetles are simply 25% of all the animal kingdom that we've discovered, with around 2 million species. These range from pretty lame to super sweet, and they basically cover the whole board. Now let's fill out some of the lower tiers real quick with the category, bugs that are freaking annoying. Fleas and ticks are little meanies that mess with people and pets without providing any value. F tier. I swear flies just exist to be in the background. I don't know a single person who actually likes these, but I guess they're not doing anything directly negative. Unlike mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are technically also flies, but they have single-handedly caused the most amount of annoyance and grief to basically everyone from itchiness to diseases. I don't think it's very controversial to put them at the bottom, but there is a fly that's pretty cool, the dragonfly. They fly around real quick and hunt other bugs straight out of the air, which is pretty awesome. We'll go B tier. Then honestly, I don't totally know what counts as a bug, but we'll bring in the squirmy fellas that got no legs. Worms are probably the easiest thing to draw ever, and they're kind of neutral. But when they get really long, it's very gross, so that docks them down a couple tiers. Slugs are kind of like more developed worms, getting some eyes in an actual direction. Like if you rotate a worm, it's not gonna do anything, but a slug has a dedicated bottom side for maximum speed. I don't know, they're cooler, I guess, but still kind of gross. But snails are really cool. I understand that they're just slugs with a shell, but that shell is instantly such a flex. The design is so iconic and they're super slick because they're always at home. A tier. You know those candy bowls people put outside when they're too lazy to answer to trick-or-treaters at Halloween? They usually say take one or something like that. Well centipedes and millipedes are like the kids that stash half the bowl for themselves, except instead of candy, it's legs, leaving the kids that were too slow with no legs at all. As selfish as it is, the maxed out leg stat is pretty sick. Also A tier. Speaking of Halloween, cicadas are the scary clowns of the bug world. While normal clowns come around all year for birthdays and stuff, scary clowns only come around once a year. And a specific kind of scary clown stays underground for an obscure amount of years before emerging to scare people in their own unique ways. There's lots of theories on why cicadas have such a weirdly specific timing on their life cycle, but nobody totally gets it. Anyway, cicadas are among the loudest of all the animals at about 120 decibels or about as loud as a freaking chainsaw. They got some cool lore, I guess, but I'd prefer to keep my hearing for more enjoyable sounds. D tier. Then one of the most raw bugs around is the mantis. These guys blend in with their surroundings while also looking like aliens, and they can basically one-shot anything they're trying to eat by instantly turning them into a kebab using their arm thingies. They don't even care if the bug is still alive, they'll just go straight into eating them up. They can even eat birds and fish, which is absolutely insane. I think they deserve S tier. There's a lot of bugs on here, huh? Now it's time to enter the hive mind. Bees build really cool hives with the whole hexagon deal that you're all obsessed with, and they make honey, which is honestly a top tier food product. Bees give off similar energy to ants with the hardworking team thing, so of course we'll put them together in the self-named B tier. Wasps and hornets are straight up just cooler bees, A tier. I don't know if people will be upset by this one or not, but I don't really care for spiders. Like I don't think they're bottom tier by any means, and the web thing is cool I guess, but I'd put them below mid, honestly. And last of the normal bugs, we'll finally put in my favorite bug of all time, roly polies. These go by many names, potato, pill, doodle bugs, armadillidae. <laughs> They're just so chill and cute and they just do their own thing, which includes balling up like none other. S tier. Oh boy, now it's time for those bonus, bonus bugs. Here's one of the most iconic tattoos of all time, shrimps' bugs, <laughs> and I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I just love that someone would get this tattooed, along with it looking more like shrimps' bugs, which is even funnier. <laughs> but anyway, as an animal, shrimps are alright, and they taste alright. We'll go C tier. Staying in the ocean, lobsters are the biggest bugs yet. They got the iconic claws and color, they swim around funny and overall bring some cool vibes to the bug list. A tier. 
Crabs are basically just stretched out lobsters. Not quite as cool, but they're basically the same. And don't worry, I didn't forget to bring Omega into this. And it's kind of like a sideways B. Well, we did it. I was so in the groove that I wasn't even thinking about being scared. And now we have a totally solid tier list. So I'd say today was a pretty solid success. Sorry if your favorite bug ended up in low tier, but it is a perfect list, so no complaining. And subscribe.